We are making tomato sauce. Tomato sauce is one of the mother sauces. And from the tomato sauce, we will be making Spanish tomato sauce. Let's get started. For this tomato sauce, this is going to be a vegan version. Therefore, it does not have any animal product. In a traditional or classical tomato sauce made in France, you would probably start with butter and you would end with butter and part of the sauce would actually incorporate pork hocks or ham hocks so or pork feet actually so in this version we want to make it as accessible as possible <clears throat> also highlighting the quality of ingredients so we're going to be starting with good quality olive oil and we want to coax out as much flavor as we can from some onions so we will be sweating these onions on a low heat and we will not be getting any color on the onions. So making sure that there's very little color on these onions, coaxing that sweetness out before we add in our next ingredient, which is the sun-dried, I'm sorry, the tomato paste. Now since I'm doing this on such a low heat, I went ahead and added the garlic. Now if I was doing the onions on a high heat, I would not want to add the garlic because it would burn. And burnt garlic has that bitterness to it that's not nice. So if we are doing this on a low heat, then the garlic can go in and should be no problem. So at this point, I have sweated my onions. They're softened, but they do not have color. And at this point, I'm going to add in some seasoning just to coax out a little bit more of that moisture from the onions. This helps to not, we're not really seasoning the sauce at this point because I added such a small amount. We're just getting it so that the onions will have more of a chance to release their moisture. And now I will add in my tomato paste. So the tomato paste in this recipe is essential and it's essential to Put your tomato paste in but also cook it on a low heat so that it becomes a shade darker and this helps to intensify the flavor of the tomato paste as well as giving it a tiny bit of caramelization and that natural sweetness comes out as well in the end that helps your finished sauce so you don't have to add as much balancing sweetness to it so typically in a tomato sauce you might have to add sugar you might have to add honey uh, because of the acid from the tomato but if you're coaxing out natural sweetness from other areas then you won't have to do that Now that our tomato paste has become a shade darker, we can go ahead and add in our tomato product. Now in the video that you've seen on Ruby, you'll notice that the tomatoes have been pushed through a food mill. The fact of the matter is not everybody has a food mill at home. 
So we have gone ahead and purchased crushed tomatoes so that you already have that broken down tomato. You don't have to worry about pushing it through a food mill. <clears throat> it just makes the whole process a little bit easier and then we don't need to have you purchase any special equipment. So now I've added in our crushed tomatoes and these tomatoes here do not have any herbs in it, do not have any seasoning. So it's just crushed tomatoes. And we're going to go ahead and let this simmer for about 45 minutes on very low heat. Now it's very important for this simmering process to make sure that it goes through all the way. You want to reduce, it's going to reduce the the sauce and therefore intensifying the flavor, but also give it a chance for some of that really, really kind of harsh acidity to mellow out. So please don't forget to go through this process and try to stir it a couple of times so there's no scorching. Okay, so now that our mother sauce is finished, I can put this off to the side so I can start to make the small sauce or daughter sauce, which is the Spanish tomato sauce. So I will be putting my mother sauce into this once I completed the sauteed vegetables. So let's put in a little bit more olive oil. And this Spanish tomato sauce here is a recipe that you can find in any culinary school cookbook. And it has the addition of some other vegetables, but also a little bit of a kick of heat that comes from basically hot pepper sauce. So at home, you know, you might have Tabasco, you might have Sriracha, maybe you even want to put fresh chilies, you can put crushed red pepper flakes, but we will give you a small container of some hot pepper sauce that you can utilize. Now, if you are averse to things that are spicy and you still want to make this sauce, just for this purpose, you can go ahead and leave out a little bit of that hot pepper sauce. And that way, because this is for your consumption, you can go ahead and eat it. So in comparison to the last onions that we did, these vegetables are going to get caramelized quite a bit. So you want a lot of color on here. You want that to really intensify the flavor. Remember, we're building flavor as much as possible. So we have our mother sauce already done, and therefore we want to add more flavor to it by caramelizing these veggies, getting the natural sweetness out, then we can add in our mother sauce. Perfect. So now I will add in my other vegetables. And in this case, there are chopped green bell peppers as well as sliced mushrooms. So we're adding those in, and remember that we want to get these to that, to that nice golden brown, kind of a deep golden brown color. So that's going to take some time on medium heat. So please don't rush this process. If you turn the heat up too high, you're going to scorch that garlic and make, sh make it bitter. So we don't want to have that bitterness. So you get that into the caramelization that it needs. Then once that's done, you can add in your mother's sauce. Now we have achieved the color that we want from our vegetables and it's time to add in the finished mother sauce. So here we go, putting in the mother sauce and at this point we will season the sauce. You can let the sauce simmer for, I don't know, 5-10 minutes first and that's fine. Uh, but definitely because now we are past the point of a mother sauce, we can go ahead and put our seasonings in. So that looks like salt, pepper, hot pepper sauce, and maybe even a pinch of sugar just to balance that, that acidity. So when you have your finished sauce, you should have a really beautiful texture from the caramelized vegetables, but also not have that harsh acidity because we tried our best to coax out as much natural sweetness as possible. The viscosity that you're looking for here is going to be kind of on the thicker side so that when you pair it with pasta water later, then it will be really, really nice and, and adhere to your pasta well. So this sauce can be used for so many different purposes. 
chicken parmigiana, you can have it for uh, lasagna, you can use it again in pasta, you can have it for bakes, different other things, so there's lots of options for you. Enjoy this recipe.